Welcome everybody. This is my little test experiment of my garage show. I think I'm gonna call it the good life experiment. I have Abigail Ratchford here and we're talking about these subjects. What does that say? Lottery, 900 million, are you gonna win? Batman vs Superman, Playboy Mansion's up for sale. This book of the day, the decision book, 50 ways to make better decisions. Did you memorize all the ones? Yes. What were they? The Eisenhower method. That's my favorite. These are hard to remember. <laughs> so let's start out by saying this. Um, the number one thing I've found in my life that has made or break, broken every dream I've had is how good of a decision I can make. So we're going to talk about the theme is decision, but we're going to talk about the NFL. I got, I'm going to the Super Bowl. We're going to talk about Batman vs. Superman, if you should see that movie. We're going to talk about business and entrepreneurialism. Should you buy the Playboy Mansion? If you won the Powerball mm -hmm. and you won 900 million, you'd have enough to buy the $200 million Playboy Mansion, which by the way, it ain't selling for 200 million. I've been there before. You've been there before, right? No, never. You've never been there? Mm -mm. Okay, I shouldn't assume. And then Golden Globes tomorrow. Uh -huh. So first thing, here we go. Just a little side question. If you won the Powerball 900 million mm -hmm. today, what's the first thing you'd use the money for? Like what, what would it be? What car? Like one of yours, maybe. <laughs> one of mine? She'd, she'd steal one of mine. I would just take one of them. She'd, she'd just pay, a, pay some mobsters to come in here and break my ankles and, get, and take the car. Now, if you happen to win the lottery, or you don't win the lottery, or you're an entrepreneur, or you're trying to improve your life, it's all about a decision, right? Because that was your decision, you're gonna buy a car. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a game here. There's 50 ways to make better decisions in this book, so you tell me Abigail, when to stop. Okay. I'm not looking. Stop. The unimaginable model. Oh, this is interesting. That was good timing yeah. that you picked this. Okay, here's this thing. I'm gonna talk about this. Here's what you do to make better decisions. They talk about Adam Smith used this technique, Albert Einstein. Um, models explain, and not models like you're a model, we're talking about <laughs> thought models, decision-making models, how we should act and what we should do. But do they prevent us from seeing things as they really are? So the average person in the world, I say, has so many conclusions in their mind mm -hmm. that there's no room for expansion. You're an Aquarius, you will agree with this. When your mind is too full of conclusions, there's no room for expansion. So the unimaginable model is actually something I talk about in the 67 Steps. There was a philosopher named Descartes. Have you ever heard the saying, I think, therefore I am. Yes. Okay, that's a very famous saying. That same philosopher, he did an experiment in his life. You could try this sometime. It's a pretty crazy experiment. The experiment is you're not allowed to believe anything mm -hmm. that could possibly be wrong. Oh. So let's say, are you a political, Republican or Democrat? Democrat. Okay, if you're, you, so in this thought experiment to make better decisions, you would for temporarily, for like a, a day, you're not allowed, is it possible that that Democrats are wrong. Yes. Okay, so then you cannot be a Democrat. That's the rule. Okay. And Descartes did this, and he did it for like a year. And you know what, he, he got rid of every belief he had in this, that crazy belief, like God, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what the only thing he said he could believe in? That he, wait, I don't know. It's not a trick question. Nobody knows the answer, so if you don't know the answer, uh -huh. you don't have to feel bad. Guess. That he could be wrong? Math. 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 That was right. Somebody got it there on, we're streaming on Periscope and Meerkat too. So you might come to a different conclusion, but the way he made better decisions was by stripping out all the things that could be wrong mm -hmm. or had a possibility of being wrong, and he was left with only math. So when he made decisions, do you know what he started doing? He started using math. So if he had $900 million, he'd probably make a little formula. If he won the Powerball lottery, he'd make a formula and say, what percent would you give to charity, let's say? Mm, 30. Okay, 30%. So he put his Excel formula. What percent would you just keep just for like fun, just to like blow the money? You got $900 million. You probably have less after taxes, but let's just pretend. What percentage? 40? 40% yeah. 40 for fun. Yeah. Okay, so you got 40% for fun. 
So now you have 900 million, you have 360, what kind of fun are you gonna have for $360 million? A lot of fun. You're gonna, you're gonna rent a country. That's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna rent a country. Now, what percent would you save? I don't know, the rest, yes. Okay, so she'd save 30% or so, something like that. That's pretty good. No. So you'd give, what do we say, 30% to charity, helping mm -hmm. people, family, paying yeah. off debts, homeless people. Do you have a favorite charity? Um, probably Susan Komen, just because I know a lot of people. That what is? It? I don't I actually Susan don't know Komen, that one. Breast yeah. cancer. Oh, breast cancer. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't want to look bad. See, you're making me look bad on camera. <laughs> She's like, "Don't make me look bad on camera." I'm like, "See, you know so much stuff I don't know." <laughs> so, a good decision-making model is just to go and strip out preconceptions, and I find that true. Like, people are always most people when it comes to a hard decision, they have three tools they do. Think, what's the hardest decision you have? Right now? Yeah, right now, confronting you. Like where to live, what occupation to do, what Where to move to, because I'm moving in a month. Okay, where to move to. Yeah. So a lot of people will do stuff like ask friends. That's a decision-making tool they use. Mm -hmm. They'll go online. They will make a pros and cons list. You ever seen that, where yeah. you like make a list? But this book has a better one. So one of the things I would, this book would say is pretend you could live anywhere in the world. Don't make preconceptions that you have to live, because now you live in Hollywood area. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, maybe you should live in a tree house in Nicaragua. <laughs> no. no, I'm moving to LA, but just a different Yeah, area. but what part of LA? I don't know yet. Close so what part have you never thought you would want to live in? Hmm, like Silver Lake. Maybe. You never thought of Silver Lake before? No. So according to this decision-making model, you should try to go to Silver Lake just once, just so you can cross it off the list. No preconceptions. Oh. So try it. Okay. Deal? Yeah. You gotta shake with the right hand. Boom. <laughs> okay, on to the next subject. So that's a little decision making trick. <laughs> Grab this book, it's pretty good. Let's take a few questions from people on Periscope and Meerkat. Who's got a good question? What was the name of the book again? The Decision Book by Michael Krogeris. Uh, Somebody said they would travel the world to meet the smartest people they could if they won 900 million bucks. I like that. Someone said, Todd, it's good to see you happy. Giggles, it's cute. Maybe you're talking about you. Yeah. Uh, okay, best way to test marketing. We'll get to that a little bit. That's a good question. Remind me to ask okay. about that. Next thing on the list, Super Bowl, American football. Are you going to it? Do you care much about football? Not at all, no. Do you even watch the Super Bowl? No. Oh man, you're just not American. This is America? You might be, I might have to take you off the show just for that. What's up with that? Uh, somebody said that you hate sports, you'd rather play them. Okay, are you talking for her? Would you rather play football? No. You can play, you ever seen that fantasy football where women wear like, yeah. or what is that, like lingerie football or something? Yeah, the lingerie football. Power puff? Power puff? Yeah. All right, uh, moving on here. Batman versus Superman. Who wants to see that? You? Yeah. Are you pretty excited about that or don't really care? I actually know I do like that stuff. So I got a cool Batman. Who's playing this Batman in this one? Ben Affleck. Oh, damn it. Yesterday I got to chill with Christian Bale. How's that? He played a good Batman. Okay. He's bigger dude than I thought, I will tell you that. Really? He has a big beard right now and he, he bumped against me with his beard. So that was my brush with Batman at the AFI Awards. Playboy Mansion is up for sale. It's 200 mil. That is crazy. Would you ever spend 200 million dollars on a house? No. Or would you rather have like 201 million dollar houses everywhere in the world and diversify your real estate yeah, portfolio? Yeah, for sure. See, she's smart. She's gonna be richer than all of us, guys. We gotta get with it. Okay, I'm gonna talk on uh, I got a question yesterday, somebody asked me. So now we're gonna switch a little bit gears to business. Someone said, Ty, I've got the perfect idea, uh, but the problem is I have three different business ideas. Mm -hmm. Should I launch all three at once, or what is my, is, you know, they asked my recommendation. And you said, what? one of the hardest things in your life is what? Where to move to. And you told me earlier you have like so many things. Oh, so I always have so many things on my plate that I feel like I can't accomplish any of them because I just get overwhelmed. 
Yeah. Just choosing which to do first. This is a very common question, and it, I'll tell you my basic framework to make that decision, it's not in this book, it's the Confucius decision-making tool, which he said, the man or the woman who chases two rabbits catches none. So my recommendation, if you have three business ideas, or if you're already an entrepreneur and you have three products you wanna launch, what I would do is number one, I would pull out a list and I would look myself in the mirror and be like, honestly, which of these is the most important one? And I define important as like, you enjoy it, it'll help humanity, it has the potential to make you money, you could see yourself doing it for 10 to 20 years, and then whichever one is the most likely, you never know for sure, put a number one by it. And then number two and then number three. This is actually what Warren Buffett does. And Warren Buffett is not, this has been, for all of you watching, the last 48 hours, I've been, I don't know what's up. I think it's just a award ceremony. <laughs> I got to be at this little thing with Warren Buffett in somebody's living room with Warren Buffett. I didn't get to meet him, unfortunately, but this is how Warren Buffett decides his life, and he built a $300 billion company. Pretty good, wow. 300 bill. He's, uh, and what he, he still doesn't have, a, he, I mean, he has more, 10 times more than that Powerball. And the way he did it was he says that exact same thing. You prioritize one, two, three, and then you're not allowed to go to two until one it's is rocking and rolling. Well, it's a good idea. So you're gonna try that? Yeah. We'll call that the Warren Buffett, Ty Lopez modification <laughs> model, business model. Uh, so <laughs> that was a question I had. And I think, I mean, that's my answer to that question. And I see it as, for those of you trying to do big things, this is the number one thing that's gonna take you out of the game. Because if I meet two people, I'll just give you this analogy. Imagine you're in a dark alley, mm -hmm. okay? And you see three big thugs coming at you. Who do you want standing next to you? Somebody who goes, who you've known for 10 years and for the last 10 years, all they've done is done boxing, let's say. That's all they've done, they boxed. Or, so they've had 10 years experience as a heavyweight boxer or you have your friend who's ADD, who goes to the gym, gets a membership, goes for a month, then switches over. I think I'm an artist and they go there. And, or even just keeping it all sports, person who does boxing for a week, then they switch over to Muay Thai, then Jiu Jitsu. Who do you want? You want the expert, right? Maybe. Maybe the one who has ADD is like crazier though. She's this ruined my analogy. Street fight. So She's ruined my analogy. Thank you, Aquarius. Fight, like, I told you, Aquarius, um, <laughs> <laughs> Where, have you ever seen the Apollo? At the Apollo, they have a hook. The Sandman can pull it. Nathan, you could be the Sandman. You may have to pull her off stage. All right, she makes a good point. She makes a good point. Um, <laughs> see, you'd be good on TV. You should be a, you should be a TV host. Maybe. Did you ever think of it? No. What have you thought of doing? Just what I do now. No, actually, you know what? I went to college uh, for two years and I started in broadcast journalism, but then I switched. This is bro that's what I, I know, just said. I, it was for like a month. I'm like the ADD person that you don't want to be in the alley with. No, that's you said that's you want to be. That's why she defended it. She goes, I want to be myself. Uh, somebody said she's so funny. They like you, they think you're funny. <laughs> and um, yeah, okay. Ty, did you buy a lottery ticket? Here's my take on the lottery ticket. It's not good odds, so don't do it. And the one time I bought a lottery ticket, I was 10, I was with my grandma, I'll never forget, in San Diego, I was in the Ralphs and we were going through and I said, Grandma, let's buy one more ticket for a dollar. And she's like, she would always buy me a ticket when I was 10. And she bought that ticket and it won 100 bucks. Wow. And I grew up with a single mom, I didn't have any money, much money growing up, so I'd get a dollar a week allowance, so I got 50 bucks a year. So 10 bucks, I mean 100 bucks, I had just doubled my annual revenue in 10 seconds. And so I bought a bike. I remember I bought a, bought a Huffy mountain bike so I could ride to school instead of walk. And I bought that thing and, I was, and it got stolen three days later, which is the moral of the story. The average person who wins the lottery loses it in two years. These people win the Powerball, they ain't gonna be rich in two years, you mark my words, because one of their friends is gonna be like, dude, you should invest in my, Real estate on the on Mars, it's gonna be good. They're gonna buy some Matt Damon property up there, Martian. But then for Christmas, you know what I decided? To get another bike. What? Close. 
more lottery. My mom said, I have $200, that's it to spend on you. What do you want? I said, mom, buy me 200 lottery tickets, a really? dollar each. Wow. And I was stoked. So here's the deal. I was excited because I had done the math. I was like, every five tickets, I'll win a hundred bucks. Got 200 tickets, I'm gonna be rich. So I remember there, sitting there in San Diego at my grandma's house, scratching. And there was like none, I won like two of them won. So I won a total of like 20 bucks. I was so pissed. <laughs> So easy come, easy go, man. The Amish used to, I lived with the Amish for two and a half years. See this Ferrari where it says horse there and Lamborghini, you can't see, but a Lamborghini has a, has a, a bull on it. That's my farming days now. There, that, that's my. Where did you live? Uh, Pennsylvania, that's where I'm Ohio, from, and Virginia. From Pennsylvania. What part? Uh, like Wilkes-Barre. Yeah, there's yeah, Amish in Wilkes-Barre. I, I lived in Lancaster I'm County. I'm formerly Amish. Kannst du, kannst du Deutsch verstehen? I know their language. <laughs> That's their language. They that means. speak like that? Yeah. Wow. That means, can you speak Pennsylvania, the language they speak? Wow. I actually speak their language. I was never Amish, but I lived there for two and a half years, so. It's like Reading? What's the area? Lancaster. Lancaster. I was in Bird in Hand and then Holmes County. Wow. Yeah, it's a very interesting la language. Uh, so you've learned a lot on this show. We learned about Amish, <laughs> learn how to make better decisions. We've learned that Abigail would rather have an ADD person protecting her. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that she would, spe she would spend 40% of her $900 million, million dollars on just splurging. That's $360 million. That's nuts. That was quick. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So here's a book for those of you that I highly recommend. It's called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. What do you think of that title? It's a good title. Sounds good. For those of you who want to know how to be better at marketing, you need a strong hook. Dale Carnegie, this one sold six million copies. If you can sell six million copies of a book, you are an OG. I think you should write a book. About what? Your life. Why? You do that like at the end of your life. No, because you don't know when the end of your life is. True. Ah, oh, you didn't think of that <laughs> now, did you? All right, so to wrap up, we're gonna be trying, to, I'm gonna try to do this show. I don't know if I can do it every day, but try to pop in here, have different guests. Where can people find you? Instagram, is that the best? Instagram, yes. Maybe. You got 2.8 million followers. Yes, I do. And now after the show, you're gonna have 2.8 uh, trillion. <laughs> no, trillion, we're gonna add trillions to that. <laughs> Make sure you guys follow me. It's uh, Snapchat, it's Ty Lopez, the number one, and Instagram, Ty Lopez, and make sure you subscribe on YouTube. It's at Ty Lopez, all right? So, peace out. The final, I'm gonna give you guys a final word of wisdom from Dale Carnegie in this first chapter of his book. He says, in 1909, I was one of the unhappiest lads in all of New York. What's the word of wisdom? What he learned in this book changed him from one of the unhappiest people to one of the coolest cats to ever live. Warren Buffett said, this dude changed his life. So, check out the book. Thank you. Thank you. Ha <laughs> <laughs>